Okay, good morning, everyone. Um, thank you for joining us on this seventh um, session on Facebook Live on Red Academica. Good morning, Jamie. How are you today? Good morning. Hi, everyone. Okay, so on behalf of the Secretary of Education and uh, Technology, the Science, Technology and Media Department of the Secretary of Education, we want to welcome you all to this session today. Uh, we're glad uh, to have you all with us. And remember that this is going to be our last session before going to our break. Our uh, well, I think that we're, we're going to have like regular classes or teachers are having like regular classes until this the end of this week. So don't don't forget to join us again once we come back from our break. All right. So we're going to start saying hello to people who are joining us today. And. So we have Gloria Esperanza. Thank you for joining us, Gloria from Antonio Van Uden. Thank you for being with us again. Uh, we have Jenny Angela Bernal. Good morning. Thank you for, for joining us in this session too. Angelica Moreno from Antonio Van Uden. Carolina Bonilla. All right, Osi, thank you for being with us again. All right, so please start writing uh, the name of the schools you come from on uh, well, if you're a teacher, if you're a student, if you're if you're something from uh, someone from from the academic community here in Bogota, if you're joining us from other institutions as well. And uh, and don't forget to tell us if you if you uh, our students as well. We know that some students are also joining us or have been joining us in our last sessions. All right. Okay, people. So to start today, uh, well, we're going to start like reminding you about uh, uh, the topic that brings us today. Uh, and it, it is encouraging students to think outside the box in your English classes. So remember that last class, was a, a session, we started talking about 21st century skills. And today we're going to keep on working on, uh, um, on some 21st century skills, but we're going to focus on, on the way that you can start training your students and encouraging your students to think outside the box, uh, especially these days that we have like many diff or a lot of information and, and we have many opinions about different topics. So uh, that's that's what we're going to start developing today with, with you. So as, as uh, last session, uh, Jamie is going to be with us uh, here uh, again. So welcome, Jamie, and thank you for being with us this session as well. Thank you, Diego. Are you ready to start with this presentation? Sure, more than ready. So let's get it started. And well, today's session will start as, as we usually do it. Um, we will have like an assessment uh, from what we from what we learned in the previous one or the information that we share with you. So remember that last session we were talking about. Uh, 21st century skills and here we have some questions for you related to to our last session all right so the first question it's how would you define 21st century skills and if you can start giving us some examples well, please start giving us some some examples below on the comments so remember that last time we were talking about 21st century skills so how would you define them? And give us some examples. Second question, Jamie, can you help me read it, the second one, please? Sí, 
second question, why is it important to promote critical thinking skills among all the, our students? And how can we do it? So remember that last this time- This is a very we... interesting question. Mm -hmm. Why? Why, Diego? Exactly. So remember that last time we were talking about 21st century skills and the way that we perceive the, the world and how we can start questioning ourselves about all the things that are going or, uh, or happening around us. And that's why I think that critical thinking skills are important for our students to start questioning about the, the world and, and also about the way to learn about what is happening right now, about how to solve problems, about how to be, how to give solutions. So I think that that that's that's the the, the most important part of uh, developing twenty first century skills among our students. And finally, so here we have true or false and why. Don't forget to write on the comments below what your opinions are. Right. So we have two or false and why, and the statement goes like this. The methodological principles behind way to go series are lexical approach and total physical response. So remember that last time we were providing you with some material that can be used in your lessons and that is available for you in Red Academica. So remember that we were talking about know now about way to go the english suggested curriculum so let us know what you remember about way to go our lexical approach and total physical response the methodological principles behind this series or or which ones are them so please let us know in the comments uh, if you think this is true or false and why all right what would you say, Jamie? What do you, what 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 do you think would be the answer for this question? Well, the answer is false. Uh -huh. And why? Um, what do you think? Lexical approach and total physical response are are not actually on way um, a material that is aligned to the suggested English curriculum. And those are not approaches that are not that are incorporated in the CS. Okay, thank you very much, Jamie. So yes, this information is false, as Jamie said. So please start giving us the reasons or why do you think this is false and um, what the principles that, that we have uh, behind the way to go series are uh, as we mentioned as they were mentioned in the previous session all right so moving on we're gonna have like some uh, reflection time uh remember that that as class we started like talking about the way that you could start promoting critical thinking skills among your students by using quotes no or famous people's quotes and today we, we, we have uh, brought you this quote. So let's let's take a look at it. So here we have, like as I was saying, a quote from Buddha. And the statement goes like this. What we think we become, right? So, what ideas come to your mind when we see when when you see this uh, statement, and and what can you infer from it? So, Jamie, what about you? For example, when you see the statement, "What we think we become," what can you think of? What what ideas come to your mind? Well, I guess it is talking about how the things that you can learn. Mm -hmm. So the more you learn, the better person you can be. Okay. What do you think, Diego? Well, when I see this statement, I think that well, with all the information that we receive through our our lives, it's, it's like represented in what we are. So 
So that if we collect positive experiences, if we collect positive information, if we try to question ourselves and be, uh, and we are in constant uh, searching of knowledge, I think that we can become better people because we're going to be like more open to what other people think as well. So I think that this is what comes to my mind when I see this phrase. And people, please let us know below on the comments what ideas come to your mind when we, when we see this statement. All right. So to move on, remember that today, we're going to have this agenda. So, Jamie, can you please let us know what we're going to be doing today? Sure. So, first of all, we are going to start with a contextualization about the topic. So, it is going to be uh, critical thinking and problem solving. Also, we are going to have another special part for activities and and finally, we are going to have the conclusion. We are going to have the wrap up of the session. All right. So this is what we're going to be uh, doing with you today. So remember that the idea is that we try to do it as interactive as possible. So please uh, start commenting uh, on uh, or below this video. And well. In, in, the, in the title that we have for our session today, we say, we use the, the, the phrase, think outside the box, all right? So, what, what, when you have this statement or this phrase, what, what ideas come to your mind thinking about or think outside the box? What, what is it? What, what can we understand when, when we have this statement? So, in simple terms, Thinking outside the box can be described as thinking beyond the norms or being a non-conformist, okay? So when, when we have this statement, when we say that we're thinking outside the box, is because we are not thinking as other people expect us to think or the way that structures that have been built are, are telling us to, to think, but we start like, going beyond right we we start like say like okay maybe this is not this way maybe what about this other option all right so, and, and okay we have this norm but what if we had this other norm or what if we break this rule what would happen all right so this is like one of the ideas that uh come to our mind when we have this thing and think outside the box when we think outside the box, it doesn't mean that we have to defy gravity. So it doesn't mean that we, we, we cannot accept some things. It doesn't mean that we, we will be trying to change everything that is stated or, or, or that is told uh, to us. So what about like realizing that thinking about the box is not always saying that other people are wrong and things are uh, supposed to be doing in a different way? Okay, and it simply means you need to be innovative in the way that you give solutions, all right? So remember that uh, when we were started talking about critical thinking and we started talking about uh, problem solving uh, skills, we have to start being creative and we have to start using innovation in the way that we give solutions to problems. All right, so when we think outside the box, it's because we are given solutions in a fast way, but we're also given an innovative solution, not the solution that people expect us to give. All right, so let's move on on, on this topic, and, and here we're going to have some tips that that uh, you can like think of when, when, when you want to promote uh, thinking outside the box among your students. So, what about start thinking, questioning ourselves more? So asking ourselves why? It's it's like little children, no? When we're children, we, we also question why this, why uh, the, the sky is blue, why it's, is it raining? So questioning ourselves why or promoting this among our students will start making them think um, outside the box. 
What about expanding our knowledge? What about being exposed to different ideas? So usually we read books that we like, but what about reading books that we don't like or about topics that we don't know about or the topics that we don't agree with? Okay, how about being exposed to different ideas? So, for example, when we think about uh, the sports or politics or religion that are like the most difficult topics to, to, to talk to uh, or to talk about. Uh, so, what about being exposed to other ideas, to different uh, perspectives? So, what about watching t uh, videos on YouTube about topics that you don't know about? Yes. For example, how to fix something in your house. So this is another way which you can start thinking about uh, outside the box. How about challenging your capacities to solve problems? Sometimes, well, we have a problem and we try to avoid problems. But what about facing the problems and, and being exposed to many, many problems so that we start like not real problems or not problems that we have at the moment, but maybe having hypothetical situations and say like, what if, and then think about possible problems that you might face in your future. So this is another way. And, and how would I do it differently? So for, for example, when people say, okay, what's the solution for the coronavirus lockdown? Okay, so people say, don't go out, uh, use a mask, wear a mask. So what about thinking about other possible solutions, no? So this is another way in which you can start thinking in a different way or in a different conventional way, all right? So these were some tips. So moving on, Jamie, I think that you have like some important information related to what we started discussing uh, in our last session. So they're all yours. <laughs> Thank you. So just a little bit to connect your idea. Um, we want also to invite you um, to have a different reflection, I'll give you some other options that you can evaluate and probably you can test in your lives. Hopefully it is going to be a very successful class. So according to the context, we last session discussed about critical thinking and also to increase the skills. So in this case, we were talking about UNESCO framework. So in this session, we are going to talk about competences, especially we are going to talk about critical thinking and problem solving. So why critical thinking? Because it is a skill that in this society is fundamental and all students deserve gaining this skill because that is going to be so useful for the, their daily lives. Uh, while critical thinking and problem solving used to be competences only for the very intelligent students, in this moment, it is a critical ability. So every student really needs critical thinking and problem solving. Um, here we have some references. If you would like to have more theoretic information, you can visit those links. Those are documents um, and also articles that are so useful, so you can have further information. Okay, so what about critical thinking and problem solving for children and students? Okay, so it is not only useful, to be better students, it is also going to help them to have effectively social, scientific, and practical resolution of problems. So these abilities are going to be so, so important for them to deal with the real problems that they have to face every day, that they have to face in their daily life. So critical thinking students who are, are, who, who are able to think critically, are able to solve problems effectively, and that is gonna give you tools and give you also opportunities 
to succeed in your life. So now, Diego, we are going to move to activities and resources. Thank you, Jamie. So remember that, well, in all these sessions that uh, we have been carrying out uh, since the coronavirus lockdown started, uh, our purpose is like to provide you with material useful material, available material. Remember that all the material that we're sharing with you is uh, on Red Academica. You will find it on Red Academica. And as, uh, and we also have a link for you to a drive where you will find worksheets and and uh, other activities, websites where you where you can uh, find activities to 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 bring to your to your lessons, especially these days that where we, we are teaching from from our houses uh, from home so this is this is like what we're gonna do or what we're gonna start doing uh, with you today we're gonna divide this uh, or we divided this uh, material uh, for like in two categories right material for children and material for teenagers so we're gonna see like some examples on how you could uh, implement this material. We, we tried to bring us uh, as, as many worksheets as we could because we know that these days communication uh, through uh, internet is not that easy. So now we, we, we will start sharing with you. So Jamie is going to give you like a brief introduction and then I will share with you the activity. In some uh, cases we're going to be interacting with you so in a, we ask you please to to start commenting below uh, what your answers would be all right so Jamie can you please let us know what how can we uh, start implementing critical thinking and problem solving skills among young children or young learners yes okay so this is a general strategy that Diego y Jamie, perdón que los interrumpa, los usuarios nos están reportando que la presentación se ve con la pantalla recortada. Si por favor Jamie pudiera no compartirla como pantalla completa, sino como lo hicimos en las pruebas. Así, perfecto. Gracias. Thank you, Jaime. Ok. Thank you. Ok. So here we have a quote. It is, tell me and I forget, teach me and I may remember, involve me and I learn. So this is a quote from Benjamin Franklin. And actually what it is talking about is about the necessity of having real experiences or real contents during our lessons. So every time we give them examples, it is going to be fine. But when we involve the students with the activities, they are going to really learn. So we have three different um, steps to have uh, to include critical thinking and problem solving. So first of all, we have model effective problem solving. So how can we do this? Do a think aloud exercise. So for instance, you guys, your teachers are having a class and instead of giving them only the problem, you're going to show them how could be uh, the possible solution following this step by step. So model how to apply problem solving skills, giving real world examples that they can implement in their own life. So what you teachers are going to do is tell them, okay, first I'm going to analyze the situation. Secondly, I am going to provide some um, ideas to solve the problem. After that, I can evaluate. So when you do that model, that is going to be so useful because students are, are going to start thinking like you. So they are going to have a structure to solve their problems. Number two, ask for advice. Ask your students for advice when you have a problem and you ask them for advice, it is going to teach them that when they have problems, it is a good idea to ask another person. And it is 
also a good idea because they understand that to make mistakes, it is okay. But uh, you can face challenges counting on your family and your friends. Also, number three, don't provide the answer. So it is very nice when you ask them to solve a problem and your students struggle to find the answer. Ultimate strategies, remember that you can use them for children or teenagers, that they are going to be so effective. Okay, so let's see one example of what critical thinking or some examples of what critical thinking would be uh, with young learners. So we brought some examples uh, for you, like some worksheets that can be implemented in your lessons. And uh, the first one that, that we have here, it's like a problem for young learners. So for example, if you're teaching them how to to say uh, how old they are, uh, what about going beyond? How about instead of teaching them only like I'm uh, 10 years old and, and uh, Jamie is uh, 10 years old, so what about going beyond? What about bringing a problem like this one that we have or that you see on the screen? Here we have some kids, Maddie, Keith, Ashley, Max, Kelly, and Jack, and here you have some statements about their age. So here we we see that, for example, Kelly is three years older than Pete, or that Pete is nine years old, and Ashley is three years uh, older than Max, and two years uh, older than Maddie, from Maddie, or younger, sorry, than Max, and, and older than Maddie. So in here, you're gonna be promoting, or you're gonna be developing problem solving skills, you're going to be promoting uh, logical uh, skills uh, among your students. So they have to discover the real age for each of the characters that they have here. So for example, Pete is nine years old, right? So they will write, they will start like writing uh, number nine in uh, on this uh, picture, on Pete's picture. And then they will start analyzing and, and trying to use like the logical skills to discover what the age of the others are. So this is a really nice exercise because we're going beyond not only like the intelligence that you're developing uh, among your students, but also because you're integrating more difficult structures for them. Yes, instead of teaching them only how to say how old they are, you're using comparative superlatives in this case. Uh, you're using expressions like is the same age as. So they will start learning more vocabulary, more structures, and they are going to be doing it uh, as uh, they deduct what the answer of these problems uh, is. Okay? So let's move to the next exercise that we have brought. Remember that you will find these worksheets on the link that we share with you on Red Academica. And Let's let's see what other example would be. Before that, Jamie is going to give us another advice on how to develop critical thinking and problem solving skills among young learners. So, Jamie, can you please tell us what these other tips are? Okay, so we have here another strategy. Use emotion coaching. This is a kit that all emotions with this topic, it is very nice because you can use it for A1 students. You can teach them the emotions in English, some vocabulary. So you can reflect about the emotions and you can tell them that it is fine if you feel sad. It is fine if you feel worried and also it's fine if you feel good so after you're talking emotions and you, and you provide some vocabulary 
you can continue with the next process. It is step one, naming and validating emotions. So you can, um, it is fine to define the specific emotion. For instance, when you, you are frustrated or when you are sad, it is good to recognize it. After that, you can teach them that if they can possess their emotions. How can you do it? They have recognized their emotions. Uh, it is a good idea to find a calming space in which they can feel um, and afterwards, step number three, problem solving. So, with possible solutions. Those are very simple steps that are going to help your children to understand better their emotions and also to make up uh, a different ideas to find the solution. Of course, if you want further information, we invite you to visit that website that you can see there. It is biglifejournal.com. There are several exercises for children. And also you will find some downloadable material that is for free. Okay, thank okay, you, Jamie. Diego, now we have another activity. Can you tell us about this activity? For All right, so thank you, thank you, uh, Jamie. And before we move on, on uh, um, with our next uh, activity, I, I really like one comment that Hector Castillo wrote uh, below that says, fortunately, our students are experts at confronting problems which are the result of social injustice. In these terms, the promotion of solving problem skills is at hand. So yes, we know that our children and, and in some areas of Bogota, and in public education, we have students that have to face problems day by day. And this is something that you can take advantage of because, well, sometimes when they see problems that we bring to the class, they are like, well, but this is not a real problem. This is not like something that could happen to me. But you could start bringing problems that they, that they uh, face day by day. All right, so thank you, Hector, for, for your comment. And well, here we have another activity for, for young learners, and in this one, this is more like about visual skills, all right, that you can develop with your students as, 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 as you develop logical skills as well. And here they have, students have to connect these nine dots using only four lines and without lifting their pencil from the paper, all right? So here, you are developing like, let's say, logical uh, skills, but also there they have to discover how to do it following instructions. This is something important because one of the main problems we have is that our students don't know students how to follow instructions or they don't understand instructions. Or sometimes we say like, no, I'm not going to give instructions to my to my students in English because they never understand what, what I want them to do. So what about since, uh, or, or from a, an early stage, you start providing them with, in, with difficult instructions so that they can start like understanding what they have to do. And here you're working like artistic, uh, uh, artistic skills, logical skills, using this, this kind of uh, puzzle. And here we have a kid, kid that says, think beyond real and imaginary boundaries with this puzzle. So this is like a very good advice for your students since they, they are in a, in a young stage of their lives. All right, so let's, let's move on and, and let's see other examples. Uh, here we have some tips. So Jamie, can you please tell us about the tips that we have for kids? Okay, another strategy 
in which we can involve critical thinking and problem solving skills are by reading a storybook featuring characters who experience problems. First of all, the idea is try to connect that the character is facing and so they can feel empathy with the actions and life of the character, of the main character. And then secondly, we try to promote a dialogue reading. So how could we do that? By reading, we, we want to interact with the text and also ask questions like, what is going to happen? What do you think is he going to do? Uh, what do you think is the most terrible situation? What do you think is the easiest solution? So in this case, we are going to also activate a better comprehension of the, of the um, reading of the story. Now, finally, you can even have your child uh, uh, act like having a role play in which your students can have a problem and also work on a potential solution. So in this way, um, we reinforce the comprehension, we verify that they have understood the problematic situation, but also we elicit them to provide possible solutions and answers. So it is a very nice strategy for kids, but also we can try to do it with teenagers. It depends on the reading that we select. The idea is to have a very catchy book, a very catchy story, so we can ask them um, several questions and we also give them strategies to start a better understanding of the story. So now we are gonna continue with another activity this is a very, very fun activity. Diego, can you tell us more? Okay, Jamie. So, people, with this activity, we want you to interact with us. So, please start writing your comments below. And here, this is something very important that when, when we're teaching vocabulary, we usually bring visual aids to our students, no? So, for example, if we're teaching them uh, the word elephant, then uh, we bring a picture of elephant and we have them color it, and then we start like drilling and 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 uh, having them learn the the correct way to pronounce it, right? But what about bringing or teaching them vocabulary involving critical and problem-solving skills? So here, it's we have two examples of how we could do it. So let's see the first statement. It says, an elephant is like a host because, and in here, you will have your students learning new vocabulary, but also analyzing in what ways an elephant and a host are similar or are alike. So you can, I, I saw this activity and I found it really interesting because what teachers are doing these days, because they don't have face-to-face -face classes, so what they're doing is that they send this material to their students, and then they ask the students to record themselves giving the reasons, okay? So let us know what you think, what do you think? How an elephant and a hose are similar? based on, on what you see in the pictures. So please let us know. And don't forget that we know that we don't have many teachers in primary schools here in Colombia and, and in Bogota. So if you're an English teacher teaching uh, high school uh, or, or secondary school, please share this material with teachers from primary school, all right? So please let us know about uh, your examples of how an elephant is like a horse and why. Okay, so let's move on, Jamie. And for the next part, we will start talking about uh, critical thinking and problem solving skills among teenagers. Okay, how we can promote it among teenagers. So here, Jamie has some important tips for us. Thank you, Diego. Okay, so we are going to start talking about teens. 
um, how can we motivate students to think critically? So first of all, we can, we can see that, okay, or maybe we can doubt, is it possible to teach how to think critically? Is it possible to teach how to solve problems? Okay, so it's, it is possible. It is completely natural. So you, some, so, uh, and motivate your students to think critically. So first of all, ask them to analyze problems through cases studies. So when you provide them exercises with case studies, they, they can also realize different contexts, different and cultures, ask them to analyze. Uh, secondly, we have, have read articles from newspapers. So you can use um, way to go to read newspapers. So that extra information are gonna give them a lot of good vocabulary and context. Also verify information from varied sources. So for for instance, in this moment, we can have a lot of information about coronavirus. So ask them to read from different papers so they can compare information. Then ask them to summarize concepts. When they summarize, they can show you the comprehension of different topics. And finally, ask them to draw conclusions. So when they draw conclusions, it's because they have understood and they are ready to produce. Okay, so let's start seeing so the first. These are some of the topics I recommend you to visit the link that is below if you want further information. Thank you, Jamie, for those recommendations and tips. And in here, we will start sharing with you some examples of how we can start promoting critical thinking and problem solving skills uh, for and with teenagers. So for example, this is a really nice activity because here you're gonna be developing social skills with your students as well, all right? So here it says, the rules and laws we have in life are meant to guide us and protect us, protect us and to keep order in our society. Imagine that you get to make three rules that everyone in the world must follow. What rules would you make and why? So, students here have to produce three rules, three new rules that everybody would have to or should follow around the world and they, will have to, they would have to explain why. Okay, so imagine that you, you bring this activity your, to your students. That would be like really nice for them to think, okay, for example, new rules. And what about, for example, what we're experiencing with the coronavirus lockdown? So, well, maybe rule number one would be that from now on, people are not gonna be allowed to uh, shake hands with, with other people or kiss people on the cheek when they say hello to avoid uh, passing the virus to another person. So you can start integrating these topics to what the world is, is experiencing these days, okay? What you see on the news, and then you can start providing them the context so that they can bring ideas uh, and, and, and uh, provide you with examples in an easy way, okay? So let's move on and let's see what other examples or what other tips we have for critical thinking and problem solving skills. So thank you, Jamie. Can you, can you move? Oh, okay. We have the next one. Sorry. I thought that here we had some tips. So before I continue, I, I have a question from teacher Paola Bermudez that says, 
how to give students the input language for they so that they express their answers. You're speaking about promote or improve critical thinking and problem solving, but as we already know, most of the students don't have the language level to express what we pretend they communicate. What are the strategies you propose in exercises you're talking about? Excellent question, teacher, because in the previous sessions, we were talking about having role plays, having conversation models for your students to start like using expressions to introduce their opinions. For example, as you can see in this uh, uh, exercise, it says what I choose to have, and then they have to complete the specific words. And then they have, I would want these things because, so here you're teaching them how to express their opinions, how to provide you with examples, and they only have to complete with their reasons. Okay, but you are providing them. And once you finish these kind of exercises, then students can interact among them and they can start using this. We're gonna make a, or we're gonna have an example in a moment. Uh, here, for example, we have an activity related to making choices in life. So here you're gonna be developing, uh, making choices skills among your students. And for that, here you have like disruptions is like the students would have to choose three things that they want for their lives can be material things or can be whatever thing they want in life emotional things things related to friendship or to academic purposes or whatever they want but the condition is that to obtain those three things they have to give another three things away, all right? Or other three things away. So, for example, I, I did this exercise once with my students and it was really interesting because one student said, uh, what I choose to have teacher is health, okay? So in that case, he, he was not feeling well, he was having some health problems and he said that he would choose to have health in his life and the thing that this student would give away to obtain or to get health or better health was his video games he said like teacher i would give my video games away to get good health so in that case you can start promoting among your students the importance of some things in life, no? And this is very related to what we're experiencing these days. So in, in maybe five months ago, uh, having a PlayStation was a really important thing. Now we, or for students, now we have all the other priorities. So for them, having normal classes could be something or a priority these days. Or for example, if if you think about um, having food, having like uh, enough food for, for them and for the uh, siblings or their families. So now in this world that is changing every day, we know that we we are realizing about priorities in life. So this is a good exercise in which you can start promoting the way that students make choice, make choices in their lives. Okay, so let's move to the next exercise. And then we will have like some tips. Okay, on so we have some strategies for teens. So what we recommend you teachers is to ask, ask the right questions. To not only important to ask them questions, but it is also fundamental to ask them the right questions. So what could be right questions for critical thinking and problem solving? So those are the questions in which students think a little bit more, uh, they have to reflect, they have to uh, ask or investigate for more information. 
And also they have to analyze different perspectives or different cultures or different kind of, uh, I don't know, resources. So in this case, we have four common questions that you can ask to your students. So generally we tend to ask about descriptions, but we don't ask about their opinions. So this is a very good question because you can start making them reflect um, about their beliefs and also about the information that they have selected to answer the, the, the question about what do you think. After that, you can ask, it's going to be very useful because they can identify advantages or disadvantages. And afterwards, you can continue with, should it be viewed differently? And that is going to help them to um, analyze and also to identify different points of view, different perspectives. So these questions are very simple. and that you can apply them to any or of your lessons. We have here uh, Lurin Montañez, and she says, what if the students don't want to express their ideas? They are usually very shy. So when your students are very shy, remember that this is not only about speaking exercises, you can also promote writing exercises in which they can use the vocabulary. And furthermore, in which they can have like all the time to analyze, to check different information, to identify advantages and disadvantages, to verify vocabulary. So those exercises can be useful for shy students. However, as these topics are very, um, I don't know, like between interesting and polemic topics, Probably your students are going to be very motivated in a problem solving. Probably your students could feel more motivated to participate. So we are going to continue with one activity that is going to show you some examples um, in which we can use questions to motivate critical thinking and problem solving with teenagers. Okay. So here we have, for example, if you're teaching modal verbs, in this case, the modal verb would to your students, you can start bringing like activities that make, will make them reflect upon some real problems that they could face uh, in their lives. So I, I, we brought this this uh, activity with uh, to this work to this session because this is related to social media and we know that students these days are very involved in social media and we also are involved in social media due to all that is <laughs> happening these days so many teachers that didn't have a Facebook account had to open one to communicate with their students many teachers who were not using uh, platforms uh, like Edmodo or Moodle or Teams now are exploring this, but remember that it's really important that we that we also promote safety when students uh, use social media and when they use platforms as the ones that we're using these days for uh, teaching our lessons. So here. These are some interesting questions. We want to, we want you to give us um, some of your opinions about this. But here, for example, do you have? You notice that most of your friends were invited to a party on Facebook, but you weren't invited. Okay, so this is like a common situation that your students might face in a, in a, in a, at their schools or with their friends. So how would you react? What would you do if, if you know that there is a party and no one invited you? So this is a way in which you can teach your, your students to manage their emotions, their emotional intelligence as well, how to react. What about, for example, this one? 
someone has screenshotted your pictures and is using them on a fake profile on Facebook. So this is a very common thing, no? That people find out that other people are using their, or other person is using their, uh, his or her pictures and is, uh, or created a, a fake profile and is contacting people that you know. So this is a, a, a real situation. So students are going to be involved in this topic because it's something that they know has happened to someone they, they know or that could happen to them. Your friends posted a long picture of you when you were younger on Facebook, but you don't like how you look. This could happen, no? Your aunt or your uncle uh, posts a picture of you when you were a child or something that you don't like the way you look. How would you react? What would you do? How would you tackle this problem? Would you call your aunt or your uncle and say like, hey, please remove the picture? Or you would say like, no, but asking my, my uh, a relative to remove a picture from his or her profile would be like something not really nice to do. So they will start analyzing. And people, finally, for you to interact with us, someone that you don't know sends you a message on Facebook asking you to meet up. So, what what about this situation? This is very common. And, and, and as teacher, and, and as Jamie was saying, um, and was answering to, to Lude, if this is a topic that will motivate the students to speak. For example, talking about social media and problems in social media, because this is something that they experience uh, daily, okay? Jamie, what would you do if someone that you don't know sends you a message on Facebook asking you to meet up? What, what would be your reaction? What would you do? Well, meet up with that person because that is very, very dangerous. Okay, so this could be... So teachers, please let us know in the comments below. What would you do? If someone you don't know sends you uh, uh, a message on Facebook asking you to meet up. So this is like a way you can also promote safety and you can, you're you going to be developing other strategies uh, for uh, related to social skills among your students, no? Good. So let's move on and see some other examples and tips related to the way that you can promote um, critical thinking and problem solving skills, all right? So let's go to the next example. Okay. So Jamie. we can continue with um, um, a strategy for teams. This is a method, the SODAS method. It can be used, it is very easy to remember these steps to follow. So first of all, we're gonna have situation. In that moment, we analyze, and uh, then we continue with options. So we evaluate the different possibilities. Then we have disadvantages, the negative aspects. Then we have advantages, and there we can see the positive, actions or or the pos the positive um, situations and after that we have solutions so once the teenager have followed the situation option disadvantages and advantages that student is gonna be ready to uh, make up a solution and also they are gonna be ready because they have they have continued their, the way they think. You were asking for some um, materials links. So here it is big life journal that home. In this website you can find several it is also it is not only about critical thinking and problem solving. 
it is also about social emotional learning. So I do recommend you to visit this website because that is gonna be so um, we are gonna continue. Here we have some answers that people are giving us to the question that we just asked. And Jenny says, I would not risk, risk to meet someone I don't have information, but I would kindly refuse the invitation. So this is like one of the answers. We also have Pilar that says, I move on to the next message. And uh, Sandra says, I would look for information about the person. Thank you. So this, these are like, uh, some of the of the examples that in which you can promote the use of critical thinking and here we have another example it says crazy crazy captions here you have some images this is also about developing um, visual skills and also innovation and creativity so here you have some pictures and students have to create dialogues or captions to the pictures or they can create create memes all right so this that is something that they are really into so they you can show them pictures and they ask them like okay create a dialogue or a caption that explains what is happening in the picture or create a meme of what is happening this is like another way you can develop these critical thinking and problem solving skills and as, as, as well as um other intelligences like creativity and innovation. All right, so uh, let's move on, Jamie. Um, mm -hmm. And here we have the last example that we're gonna share with you today for teenagers. This is like a high high level and, and uh, problem. Remember that some of you might be asking like, Okay, but how can I implement this it means if my students don't have an in, a good English level? Well, you can adapt these uh, problems, you can adapt these activities to the level that you're teaching. Some are more difficult than others. For example, this one would be like a, a, a B1 uh, activity, the previous ones that we saw about giving rules or, or about choosing three things that you would like in your life. So it could be more like for A2 students and the ones remember to be uh, related to visual aids or those kind of things could be more used more uh, with A1 students. Here we have an example with like high level students, but remember that you can also adapt this. Oh, geez. Jamie, are you there? Okay. Okay, people, sorry for the inconvenience. I think that we had a problem. I think that we had a connection problem. So, Jamie, can you please share the presentation again? Thank you. Sure. Okay. I'm ready. Sorry, people. Sorry for the convenience. Uh, well, let's let's start over. Uh, so here we were seeing like a way in which you can adapt different problems with with other with your students. For example, here we have a problem uh, that is that you are on a ship and then the, the captain says that the ship is going to sink very soon and that you have to choose only five people. You can save the life of only five people. And then you you have, because the, the, the boat uh, uh, only or, or like the the boat that people use when they when the lifeboat they they uh, 
it only has space for or room for five people. So then you give your students the description of five uh, or ten people. Can you please move on to the next uh, slide, Jamie, please? So in, in this problem, they have to read the description to, uh, of, of the people they, they have to choose to save, and they are going to give you reasons why they, whether they save one place or uh, one person or, or another, okay? So here you have the description, for example, this one, it says, Jack of all trades and master of survival suspected for having connections with Al-Qaeda. So then students are going to say, okay, maybe this person is a terrorist. So would I save this person's life? And here you have, uh, Tan is a very skillful nurse from Vietnam, but also very racist and spiteful. So then you're going to have students uh, analyze the information and start providing solutions to these problems okay people so these are some of the activities that you can share remember that we have a link my partners are going to be sharing this link with you as as jamie was saying and here we have some other tips for you to to develop critical thinking among teams okay diego time is very short so i'm gonna go move to the topic a little bit faster so we are going to discuss in this slide about the strategies for teams. So how could we encourage our teenagers uh, to participate with solving or solving problems in a team? So there are certain activities in which they can develop also the teamwork ability. And we have here some examples. Model United Nations. Have, have you tried that at your school? So this is something like a congress in which uh, students or the different grades, levels, courses, pick topics for problematic situations and they have to vote and they have to make a lot of research. So that is going to be very useful for them because they are going to learn about different topics. And also you can use it uh, using English as the, the language to communicate. So also we can organize debate teams. And also we have two special ones like Odyssey of the Mind and Science Olympiad. So we want to show you these options because they are very structured. And those are competences that are, um, that are done very commonly. They are very traditional in the US so Odyssey of the Mind, they have different problem situations and in seven minutes, they have to find the solution. So this is a competition in a lot of schools from different states um, receive the problem and in seven minutes using also teamwork, they have to find the solution. This is a competition, they have different prizes. Um, so it is a very nice and organized activity. So here we share with you this link. This is www.odysseyofthemind.com. Creative problem solving resources. So you can go visit this website and you will find different examples. Also, we have Science Olympiad. And this is a very traditional um, contest in which it students from universities and schools participate solving problems using technology, science, STEM. So these are some ideas in which we can adapt. And probably we can have different competitions inside our classes or inside our schools. To have uh, some reflections with you. So we have some questions on solving skills in your lessons. So please give us your opinion. Can you, can you provide this environment inside your lessons after having this workshop, this information? What do you think, teachers? So Diego, what do you think? Is it possible? Yeah, I would say that any environment is a, it's a good place to, to think. So I think that it, it doesn't uh, matter where you are 
you can develop uh, critical thinking skills with your students. And these days that we're having virtual classes for, or we are uh, sending material, uh, digital material through uh, to our students through WhatsApp or through different platforms, I think that having critical thinking uh, activities can, can also be implemented uh, with, I mean, with, with all this uh, emergency that we're facing. Okay, next question. Are you ready to encourage students to be versed? Please answer on the comments. Are you ready to encourage your students? And also this question, is it possible for you and your colleagues to work collectively across, across classrooms? What do you think, Diego? Is it possible? Yes, you can start projects that involve different subjects. And, and then develop different skills among your students. It doesn't mean that when they are learning English, uh, they are only supposed to be learning about English. They, they can learn about other subjects. They, you can have projectos uh, transversales with your students. You can integrate students for, uh, teachers from other subjects to start promoting critical thinking as well. Okay, Diego. So yeah, an option is probably start having competitions like the ones that we saw before, the Scientific Olympiad, for instance. So let's wrap up. So Diego, let's start. Planning your classes differently is an opportunity to embrace other fields and general knowledge and have the students communicate. So as we saw before, when we connect um, learning a language with different situations, information, and fields of knowledge are going to give our students not only motivation, but also opportunities to improve their learning processes. Continue, Diego. Okay, so remember, think outside the box, people. It's not difficult to include activities to teach students how to be better thinkers and problem solvers. And as some of you were saying, uh, for example, Sandra Nelly Sanchez is saying, I think this present moment is appropriate to help our students think about the problems we're facing. So don't let this opportunity go. This is a very, very, very important moment in history so that students start to think in a more critical way. Okay, thank you. So there are materials and resources that can, that can help teachers develop projects and activities to increase the critical thinking and problem solving skills. Students will love these exercises. So we are completely sure that your students will feel the difference because they are gonna be asked to have more active activities and they are gonna be asked to think further and we are completely sure that they are going to love these exercises. Okay, so that being said, people, thank you very much for, for, your, for joining us again on this session. Uh, we're going to start saying uh, goodbye to, to all uh, our audience. So we have Jesus Antonio. Thank you. Jesus is saying, I guess it's a challenge. Yes, this was, it's a challenge, but it's something that we, we should start or we must do in our lessons. And Lucia Platero says, Colegio Luis Lopez de Mesa, thank you for, for being with us, for joining us. Olga says, we can learn from difficult situations and create uh, as an opportunity to learn. So, yes, this is something that we have discussed with many teachers these days, no? That this is an opportunity. That's what critical thinkers and problem solvers uh, make. So there is this problem. We have to find an, an, an innovative solution and how to deal with this problem in the best way. Uh, we also have Dofasa School. Thank you for joining us. Uh, Sandra Milena, it's a real challenge, but we motivate us uh, all uh, with all this. You motivate us with all these resources. Lucia Platero, let's go. Yes. Let's go. 
thanks for the session. Uh, Olga, <laughs> Sandra says thanks, Jamie and Diego. As, uh, as always, very useful information. Thank you, Sandra. Uh, Jenny says thanks for this helpful lesson. Ludwig, thanks a lot. So people, we're saying goodbye because we don't have we don't have more time. And uh, Jamie, thank you for joining us. Thank you for giving us those nice tips. And remember, people, we will be meeting again after the uh, break. Yes. Yeah, so remember that we're going to be back uh, like in three weeks, if I'm not mistaken, baby. Yeah, and also we want to, to let you know that the presentation, this PowerPoint presentation can be done now. And you can also have access to this material. And we also want to remind you about the spelling test, Diego. Oh, yes, I almost forgot. Remember that we already, uh, uh, you already have access to the forms, the registration forms for the spelling bee. Uh, there are many people asking us about, oh, there is a question in which you have to include the names of all your students, etc. So remember that you can give uh, or provide us with that information later, but please start registering. Uh, we have the same uh, agenda or calendar that we shared with you at the beginning, but we have to wait to see how things uh, uh, like change. And, and if we are going to be able to have this uh, soon. So for now, please don't forget to share the material with your students to have them practice. And we will let you know about any news uh, on the Spelling Bee soon. So thank you, Jamie, for reminding me. People, goodbye. And don't forget, we're going to meet again in three weeks. <laughs> thank you. Enjoy, relax. Uh, take bye. Time thank respect. you. And thank you for being with us once again. Oh, Cesar Garcia is asking a question. I don't know what the question is. Cesar, can you can you let us know what your question was? Sorry, I'm, I'm trying to look for the question, but I don't see it. And people, don't forget to just that you can replicate this video. You can like share this video on your Facebook accounts. You can also share this link with your students, with teachers from other schools that maybe were not able to uh, to join us today. Okay. Good. So thank you very much. Ah, okay. Sorry. Before we go, Cesar Garcia was asking. Thinking outside the box by definition, thinking creatively so far, you have presented regular activities that every teacher knows or implements. So how is it thinking outside the box when you do something everybody does? So, well, Cesar, we know that in this case, there are some teachers that haven't started the process of developing critical thinking among your students, or sometimes are doing these kind of questions but they don't know that they are promoting critical thinking. They are just doing them as part of an activity. So here we shared some common activities that you can do. Obviously, there are like more elaborated uh, activities that you can develop with your students as well. But these are like a way to start promoting uh, critical thinking and realizing what we're doing. Because sometimes we do these kind of activities that we don't know that we're developing. Uh, critical thinking and, and problem-solving skills as well, all right? So if you want to share with us other links where you can find other material, you're welcome to do it. So people, thank you very much. Goodbye and see you uh, in three weeks. Bye-bye. Take care. Goodbye. 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 Goodbye.